In this lesson, we will be looking at permutations of objects where specific items are not together. Grab a book and pencil and let's go. In how many ways can the letters in the word math be arranged so that the letters A and T are not beside each other? We will discuss three ways of doing this. One method is to list out all the different arrangements where the letters A and T are not together. We would get 12 permutations. As you can see, doing it like this is too lengthy and tiresome. The second method is to write down the other letters in the word math, that's M and H, and leave a space between them. We know that A and T cannot be beside each other. However, they can go into any of the blank spaces, which will ensure that they are never beside each other in any of the permutations. Now, how many blank spaces do we have? We have three blank spaces, which means we have three choices of empty spaces in which the letters A and T can be placed. So we put down the number three. If we place any of the letters, whether A or T, into one of the empty spaces, we will be left with two choices of empty spaces in which we can place the other letter. So we put down the number two. Also, the letters M and H are two distinct items, so they can be arranged two factorial ways. So we multiply three times two times two factorial, which gives us the same 12 ways that we found earlier when we list and counted the arrangements. The third approach is probably the most popular. We can find the total number of arrangements of the word math. All letters in M-A-T-H are distinct. So the total number of arrangements equals 4 factorial equals 24. We can then find the total arrangements where A and T are together by grouping A and T as a block so that it becomes just three items. The number of permutations for three distinct items is three factorial. However, remember that the block with A and T can be arranged within the block any of two ways, A then T or T then A. So the total number of arrangements where A and T are together is three factorial times two factorial, which is 12. Therefore, to get the total number of arrangements where A and T are not together, we subtract the total arrangements where they are together from the overall total arrangements of all the letters in math. So our final answer is equals 24 minus 12 equals 12 arrangements where A and T are not beside each other. Let's look at another problem. How many ways can the letters in the word banana be arranged if no two ends are next to each other? There are six letters in banana. Among them, we have three A's, two N's, and one B. Now, if there were no restrictions, the total number of distinct arrangements would be six factorial divided by the factorials of the repeated letters. So that's a six factorial divided by three factorial for the three A's, and also by two factorial for the two N's. That's 720 over 12, which is 60. So there are 60 ways of arranging the letters in banana without restrictions. Our restriction says the two ends must not be next to each other. So we need to subtract the number of arrangements where the ends are together. Let's treat the two ends as one block, which can only be arranged one way, even when switched around since the ends are identical. That gives us five items to arrange, where A appears three times. So the number of ways the letters can be arranged with the ends together is 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial, which is equals 120 divided by 6 equals 20 arrangements. So to get the total number of arrangements where no two ends are beside each other, we subtract this value from the total arrangements. So it's the total of 60 minus arrangements with ends together, 
which is 20, to give 40. So, the final answer is 40 distinct arrangements where the ends are not beside each other. Another way to solve this problem is to write down the other letters in the word banana. That's the B and three A's, leaving a space between each of them. We know that the two ends cannot be beside each other. However, they can go into any of the blank spaces, which will ensure that they are never beside each other in any of the permutations. Now, how many blank spaces do we have? We have five blank spaces, which means we have five choices of empty spaces in which the two ends can be placed. So we put down the number five. If we place an N into one of the empty spaces, we will be left with four choices of empty spaces in which we can place the other N. So we put down the number four. Now the B and the three A's are four items, so they can be arranged in four factorial ways. However, we need to divide by three factorial to avoid double counting since the three A's are identical. We also need to divide by two factorial to avoid double counting with the two identical ends. So we multiply five times four times four factorial over two factorial times three factorial, which gives us 480 over 12, which is 40. The same 40 ways that we found in the previous method. In how many ways can four men and six women be arranged in a row? if no two men are standing next to each other. Let's break this down. We have 10 persons in total, four men and six women, but the condition is that no two men can stand next to one another. That means we need to place the men with at least one woman separating them. Let's begin by arranging the six women. Since all the women are distinct, they can be arranged in six factorial ways. Now, for the men, we have seven possible gaps where the men can be placed. These seven positions are where we can insert the men without having any two men standing next to each other. So we write the number seven. After placing the first man, we are left with six gaps. So we write six. After placing the second man, we are left with five gaps. So we write five. After placing the third man, we are left with four gaps to place the fourth man. So we write four. So the total number of valid arrangements is six factorial times seven times six times five times four, which is equal to 604,800 arrangements. Therefore, the number of ways to arrange four men and six women in a row so that no two men are standing next to each other is... 604,800 ways. In the next video, we'll be looking at ways to select R objects from N objects. If you learned something new today, give us a like and subscribe to Adobe Math Lab for more powerful math insights. See you in the next lesson.